This is one of my very favorite lessons. I'm about to begin a demonstration where I'm going to combine realism with abstraction. Here you can see a very simple cruciform design with the subject of mushrooms. And this has a pretty tight design going through the background. But just about any design will work. Here's one where I'm combining irises with circles. And in this lesson, we're going to be creating a lot of textures with color sanding. We're going to use some collage, some salt. It's really, really exciting. The actual lesson I'm going to do is water lilies. And so I'm going to be dealing with reflections, some added oh, collage introductions, the idea of some of these fun lines coming through, almost like basting stitches on a quilt, just kind of wiggling through and tying the whole thing together. And we're going to be dealing with the concept of when you have lights against darks, and then sometimes darks against light. So we're going to be dealing with a lot of reversals. Here's one with a simple theme of cherries and strawberries. You can see the very strong cruciform design in this one some of the textures from the salt, and some of the fun I had just coming in later with some positive and negative painting to pull it together. You don't always have to use circles or straight lines to give it that abstract look. You can see this one, I simply lost the edges going from the dark into the light. I've added again some of those fun linear shapes, and I even came in with some Caron Dash crayons to add a bit of opacity. As you can see, I've got it all drawn out, and it's basically the cruciform composition that we've been talking about. And what I want to do is I, I want to start with an underpainting where everything is wet, and we're going to try to create a focus of light so that these, this is my focal area. Those will be a little bit lighter. These edges are just going to be what we call rest areas, and so there won't be a lot happening in those areas. One of the things most people do is they have too much going on. They fill up every square inch with, with something. And the reason I'm so excited about cruciform composition is because this way you stay in pretty much a focal area and it forces you to, to reserve some areas that are basically rest areas. So we're going to start by wetting the paper. I always start by wetting the back first. I love my big hockey brush for wetting the paper. It's a nice four inch hockey brush. So I know this is really wet. This is Arches 140 pound. Oops, we're picking up a little color there. That's okay. Now we're ready to start. So I'm going to start with my Windsor yellow, nice bright yellow. And the whole idea is to draw this in, but not paint anything we drew. So I'm basically painting around these shapes. I know some of the colors going into the shapes. I'm not too worried about it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this bright Windsor yellow into my cross here and going up and down. A little, little bit of spatter. I'm also going to move into my quinacridone gold. And this is going to go beyond the yellow. So like the yellow will come here, and then I'm going to put the gold on each side. And one of the things about water, you're, <clears throat> you always have these horizontal movements in water. So I'm mostly moving it in a horizontal motion. Now I'm going to come in with a little bit of quinacridone burnt orange, a nice earthy color. And again, this is going to come in beyond the gold. I finally reached the edge of the paper now. If I can, I'm still going to save a little bit of white in the paper. That might be hard to do. <laughs> and then I'm going to come in with some quinacridone coral because I'm actually thinking about making these into red water lilies. 
So that means I'm going to want to get some of those reds into my background as well. So coming through here a little bit. So this is quin coral, and I'm mostly putting the quin coral on top of the quinacridone burnt orange. Just because I'm not a pink person, so that makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. And then the last color I'm going to add is a little bit of cobalt blue. And this is what's going to create the focus of light. If I come in with the blue only from the edges like this, then you're going to see a little bit of grayed down and a little bit of cool. If I put it on top of the color, it grays out. If I put it on the white of the paper, we still see the blue. And again, a little spatter. Now it's time to tip the board and just let these colors run a little bit. So when I tip the board, I usually get out my sprayer, make sure it's wet, because I want to see these colors blend. You can see there's a little movement there. And again, I'm tipping it in the direction <clears throat> horizontally. I'm tipping it horizontally so the colors kind of run back and forth. Now if I want to, I can tip it the other way too. Get a little bit of blending. Now the real fun's going to start. This is this beautiful 10 gram unru paper. And I'm just going to take little pieces of this, lay it right into the wet surface, fibers and all. And as I lay this down, again in kind of a horizontal motion, leading your eye across the page, don't use very large pieces. Look at how these are pretty little. You can go in and out of your subject. If I want to, I can go into the subject. Now, if they don't, if they don't appear to be absorbing the color, then what you want to do is with your hand moving, you want to spray into these. And what will happen is they'll absorb the color around them. You'll see them getting darker. Look at, they're even creating some lovely whites. This is so cool. So this is on roux paper. Now, the on roux sometimes has hard edges, cut edges. If you want to, you can bump those cut edges into a hard edge. But I'm usually pretty careful not to get those hard edges just randomly anywhere. They can, they can create a problem. So here we go. We're just going to have some fun laying these down randomly, spraying into them, going in and out of our subject. We can go into our rest area, connect to the edge of the paper. Just have some fun with this. But I'm not making them very big. That's the point I want to make. I want you to keep these little. Don't put big pieces of this paper down or it'll be difficult later to paint on it. Zig and zag them. Okay, now don't forget to spray these. That's, that's the thing. If they look white, that's not good. So you just spray them until they look like they've absorbed the color next to them. Ooh, this is so fun. Another textural thing I would like to add to this is gauze. This is a medical gauze. I actually buy it from a medical pharmacy. <clears throat> and it's what it's uh, it's a on sterile. It's what they use for broken arms. And <clears throat> what I have to do is pull it out. It's actually quite large. But I only want to work with little sections of it. So I'm going to add, grab just a little tiny piece of this. And then I don't want to set it down so it looks like a piece of gauze. That would be a very bad thing. What I want to do is I want this gauze to look like an interesting linear shape. So see what I'm going to do? I'm just going to set it down into the wet, pull it, and just create some linear shapes. And they're kind of zigzagging their way through the picture. 
Again, if they're not dampened, they don't stay. So just by spraying into them, you can see how they're absorbing the color and creating some interesting linear movement. That's what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and put this throughout the piece. Sometimes I have to push it in place with my brush. Just take a damp brush and press it down to get a good contact with the surface. So you can either do it with the sprayer or you can do it with the brush. But it, you have to have good contact with the surface or it's not going to do anything. Now once I've put this down, then I like to put a little color on it. This happens to be a little blue, a little cobalt. And I might even take a little cobalt and mix in a little French ultramarine. French ultramarine is one of those heavy paints that <clears throat> always sinks to the bottom. So just by putting a little additional color on the gauze, not on, on any of the papers, but just on the gauze is good. And again, don't get too dark. This is just simply an underpainting. Just having a little fun here. Next thing I want to do is a little color sanding. And what I usually do is if, if I have a warm color, I color sand a warm color into it. So I have a warm color over here. I'll just put a little warm color into this. And then I have a cool color over here. So I think I'll color sand just a little bit of the cool color. There's a little cool color here. We'll come in with a little movement here connecting between those two. Salt is always good. Salt is always a great connector. Again, I just put it next to my lights. <clears throat> so we're going to throw the book at this. Remember, this is just an underpainting. We're just going to have a little fun with it. So we'll just go ahead and let this underpainting dry and then we'll really begin the fun. Well, now you can see the painting has dried. The colors are a lot lighter. And what I'm going to do is take off all these texturizing devices. And sometimes, you know, I didn't get a lot there. I got a little more here. So you just have to like what you get. That's what's fun. And now we're ready to glue down the papers. These are the Anru papers. And remember, they looked really dark when I put them into the wet paint. But now they look kind of faded, which is what they are, faded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a one-inch flat brush. Now I'm ready to glue down these papers. And so taking a little bit of the Yes Paste, wiping away most of it, what I'm going to do is put the, the glue down and make sure I'm pressing pretty hard. And what I want to happen, oops, I got a little, I don't want that on there. But you'll notice they get a little darker. Some of the color comes back when you put the Yes Paste down. So that's kind of exciting to see that color come back. So it'll just take me a minute to finish gluing this down. And then when it's dry, we'll come back. Now you'll notice that my drawing is quite dark. So you, I can pretty much see everything. But I find that most of the students need to come in and do a certain amount of redrawing. So I see this little um, liney shape here. It would be nice if that came out over here and connected to that line. So this is the kind of thing I look for. This line here needs to come out and maybe connect. Come through here and come out over here. So I have a little fun with the lines. I know I do. I just think they're great. And to me, those lines are all part of the abstraction that we're trying to create. Now here's another line that could basically connect to this one. So for any of you who can't figure out your drawing, if you can't read your drawing, take the time to do some redrawing. Make the lines a little bit darker so you can see. Because this next step is going to involve painting on dry paper, some really crisp, dark shapes. And you definitely want to know 
where you're at. Okay, we're, we're going to actually start the abstract part where we're going to design some circles around this. And so what I did is I rated the, my pantry to find circular shapes that would more or less fit this size paper. A square paper is quite a challenge. And when you're doing this, what you have to think about is that you are framing in the piece. Actually, a transparent circle would be really nice, but I don't have that. So what I want to do is I want to frame this circle in. I want to cut through part of this image and cut through part of this image. And I also want to link it to the edge of the paper. So I think I'm going to like this. I'm going to, you can see where this is partly cut off. This is going over the edge. So I'm going to draw this first circle. Whenever I run into anything, a line, a lily pad, I'm going to stop and start. <laughs> oh shoot okay and now I'm going to come up on this side and let's take a look oh yeah it's kind of close to the center but I think it's going to be okay and then down here I've decided I want to separate these two and I'd like to have this one going off the bottom so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it link with this lily pad leaving a separate area here where I can come through with the dark and see there isn't much under there but I, I can create some interest with collage and stuff later again I want it going off the page linking with some of the edges of the paper so there we go and then up here I'm going to have this circle interlock with this circle and also interlock with my subject so interlock with the circle interlock with the subject interlock with the edge of the paper so let's see how this one looks this one's going to come down into this circle Now I see I have an overlap here. I don't want an overlap. So we'll erase that. This is going to go over the top of this one. This one's going to go behind that one. And you can see this is now going to be my vertical of the cruciform and my horizontal of the cruciform. And I think I'll draw a few more of these shapes. Now if I see something, here's a cross happening right at that intersection. I think I can live with that one, but this one I need to come out and make it just a little bit more interesting. So now I would look for some tangents. Here's another one where I went over. Let's just make this a little bit bigger so that the breakout is more pronounced. I think we're in pretty good shape. Ready to go. Now I'm ready to start the excitement of putting in only the negatives. That's why I wanted to draw these shapes, interlock them, and I'm, I need to think about where my dark negative shapes are going to go. So I'm going to mix up the same colors I used in the underpainting. Here's some quinacridone burnt orange. Here's some alizarin crimson. It's a deeper version of the warm color here. And then I'm going to add Antwerp Blue. Now Antwerp Blue is a fabulous color for making green. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to start with the Antwerp because Antwerp gives us very dark values. See, and I'm looking to really pop out these circles. So if I start here with some Antwerp, and then if I decide to come in with some of the gold, oh, look at that, immediately I'm going to have some lovely 
greens, dark greens. Anything that's, I have to paint around everything. We're only doing negative at this point. So I'm going to think also about the fact that this, this is water. And water almost always has that kind of movement, horizontal movement. So as we're moving along here, I'm going to show some of this movement coming out. Here's a little piece of unruh paper. When I paint on that, I never know what's going to happen there. And now I've gone into a warm area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the warm color up here. Oops, I went outside the lines. <laughs> I'm going to start with the warm color. And then I'm going to back it into this gold. So you can see we've gone from blue to green into kind of a golden color. Now into quinacridone burnt orange. And now I'm thinking it's time to lose these edges. So see what I'm doing? I'm just coming in water, lose those edges, so that the only edge you're going to see is the edge that I've created here. I'm going to go into some nice clean gold at the very top. So I'm going to start up here with that lovely clean gold. And this is important, so I'm going to leave my water here so you can see it. Shake it, touch it on my towel, paper, <laughs> come in and lose the edge. So this is what I want to see. I want to see these edges lost. So see over here now, I'm ready to wet it, shake it, touch it, come in with this and lose it into a nice lost edge. So see, this is the original underpainting now. Now I'm ready to move along. And I'm going to paint this lovely greeny color right around this shape. look what's happening. I'm moving into a warm area. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lose this edge. And while this is still wet, I'm going to take and throw in some salt. Because salt is really good at showing, making it look like water. And I might even take a flat brush. and lift out some of these shapes, like reflections. So think about that horizontal movement. And there's going to be all kinds of strange things that happen. See the papers, the salt. <laughs> Just get over it and enjoy it. <laughs> Now I'm moving into kind of a pinky color. So what I'm going to do is use a transitional color here. So I'm going to add gold first of all. And see the gold is going to mix with the blue and give us some lovely green. I like that. Lose the edge. Then I'm going to go into the quinacridone burnt orange color. See if I put quinacridone burnt orange into that color it'll turn real dark. This way I can go with a transitional color, such as the gold, then going into the orange. Now I can go from the orange into the red. See, because the red and the orange get along so well. So isn't that kind of a miracle? Now I've gone from blue to green to gold to orange to red. So this is the lesson here about changing these colors and then losing the edges. So this whole lesson is about finding edges, leaving hard edges like that, and then coming in and losing edges. So I want this edge to be crisp and we'll throw a few spots in here too. A little salt. Remember, we're painting water. Now comes the idea about the bookend. See, if it was red up here, 
that means it's got to come out red here. And it could come out maybe a little bit of blue-green too over here. And now because this is a reflection, I'm going to um, try to make it look like a reflection. I'm going to pull some color back and forth. I'm going to wet this. And I may even cross over this line a little bit too. And then taking my stiff one inch flat brush, I'm going to come in here and lift out these lines you frequently see in a reflection. Now I'm on a lot of paper here, so I'm not going to have such good luck lifting, but that's okay. But at least we're getting some nice broken shapes here that are starting to look like reflections. So we'll zig and zag in and out of our perfect circle here. Let's move a little bit of that gold up in here. So we're going between realism and abstraction. That's what this lesson's all about. Sometimes I'm thinking realistically, like right now, I'm thinking about that reflection. And then other times, I'm only thinking about these shapes. So let's get back to the shapes. If I have this dark blue here, that means I have to put that same dark blue over here. It's a bookend. So this is my Antwerp blue, pretty much straight Antwerp blue. And then that straight Antwerp blue needs to bookend over here a little bit too. Of course, I ended up on a piece of paper there. Now I'm going to do this at right angles. So what I'm doing is I'm going to put a little bit of that color there and just lose it. So it doesn't look like it's blue on one side and not on the other. So I'll put just a little hint of that color in here. Wet my brush, shake it out, lose the edge. But I'm going to keep it very light. And then this color here now, I'm going to put the gold and then I'm going to back it in. So it'll turn green. And then I'm going to take and back into the gold and lose that edge. So you can see now basically we've gone from a very dark color into a green, into a gold, into a lost edge. Here we've bookended the color over and then literally lost it into this nice soft color. So this is coming along pretty well. I'm very happy. What we have here is the dark. This could actually be a little darker here. Come in and lose that edge a little bit. So we're coming around with the dark, transferring it over here, changing it into a warm color, going off the edge. Now the next thing I want to do is reverse this. I'm going to put the dark inside this one. So we'll start over here, put this beautiful Antwerp blue, which is so dark. And see, in order for this to work, the color has to melt out into the background color, the original color of the background. Then every time I paint over this paper, strange things are going to happen. I hope you like it. Some people don't like it. For some people, this, this isn't their thing. Now I'm going to switch into a warmer color. This is a little quinacridone burnt orange. Okay, I'm going to come back. I forgot to put a little salt on this side, so I'm just going to mist it a little bit. Sometimes when it's that fresh, you can get by with that. Then I'm going to throw, throw a little salt in here too. Now because this is going to be a red flower and it's going to be reflecting, see what I'm doing? I'm purposely pulling in some red here. And I'm purposely painting around all these silly things. But look what's happening. I'm getting close to this edge. So now what I have to do 
is I have to wet my brush, touch it, and come in and lose this edge so that I'm going to have this edge light against that dark background. So this gets a little tricky, but hey, stick with it. It's really fun. So I'm painting around these shapes, bookending it to the other side, pulling these colors into a horizontal feeling, because water is always horizontal. I'm putting up with all these silly papers that are giving me texture. And now I'm ready. Wet my brush, shake it out, touch it, come in at right angles and lose it. This is really, really important that you understand this concept because this is what's going to give you dark against light and now light against dark. Again, I'm going to throw a little salt in there and I'm going to work my way up. So we have the red under here. That means we have to bookend it over here. And I think it would be a good idea to maybe start introducing some blues again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little of my Antwerp blue. I know this is going to get real dark, but I'm just going to do it. So I'm going to put a little Antwerp here and here. And then I'm going to come over here and start popping out these lovely flowers. Ooh, this is fun. Remember now you have to paint around everything. There's no, don't paint anything you drew. Everything is painted around. And before this gets dry, I'm going to wet my brush, shake it out, touch it, come in and lose this edge into a soft edge. lose it into a nice lost edge because it's dark over here so we want to go dark to light dark to light this color here we're going to lose this color here we're going to lose and remember the bookend idea now i got to put a little bit of red up here just a little and then let it end and because we're dealing, I'm thinking about realism again, this is going to need some areas lifted out so it looks like a reflection. So while it's still wet, a lot of times I like to come in and just lift out some of these nice white lines you see in the water. So, there you go. Sometimes we'll put a few lines in. A little salt. So what I'm going to continue to do now is I'm going to pull this dark shape up through and end it under here. Then I'm going to start a dark shape up here and come down. And then I'm going to start a dark shape over here and come up. So off camera, I'm going to continue working all these beautiful negative shapes. And then when we come back, we'll paint the positive shapes. You can see I've done a lot of the negative designing now around the shapes. Starting at the top, I usually do the background first. And here I took this dark shape and bookended it over here, losing the edge here, bookending it here, losing the edge so that it breaks back to the white of the original underpainting. Then I took my dark going inside the circle, linking it through, bookending it over here. And I saved this area because I wanted to show you how to paint reflections. But just to continue with this, these negative shapes, you can see again now I chose to make it darker where these two shapes are linking together. And so it's dark here going through the center, linking to the edge of the circle. But look at what has to happen. As I get closer to this edge, I have to lose it so that I've got light against the dark, then the dark coming over here, and it's light against the dark. 
Here too, I came in from the edge and linked it to the lily pad here and then just lost it into this reflection. But I couldn't just keep going. I said, I gotta save this for my friends on the camera here. So what's happening here is I've got a reflection that's starting in the water here. And my water lilies are going to be red. So I'm already thinking ahead about that. Here you can see I've got the edge of the circle, so I'm going to stop there. I'm going to pull it beyond. So I'm just thinking again about those, the vertical movement that you see in water. And I'm thinking about the reds that are going to be dropping into the reflection there. Now as, as you have reflections, also what happens, you have these white lines. So I'm going to come in and create some white lines. And then I'm going to take this white line into the circle there. I might even pick up a little bit of that red and go in breaking out of the circle. So when you're dealing with reflections, they don't have to be perfect. I, I just here too you can see I went into the circle even though that should have remained light I just used a little artistic liberty there to, to let it become a broken shape breaking into that shape so that's what's going to happen here too I'm just going to have these shapes that go back and forth they have to stop at the lily pad Of course, I'm going to throw a little salt in there because we're talking water. Now, another little thing that is kind of cool, this water lily is casting a shadow onto the lily pad. And we don't know exactly when you're casting shadows, that's dependent on the source of the light. So I'm just going to make it up here and say this is where this shadow would be cast. Here's another shadow that would be cast. So I'm purposely taking cobalt blue to do this. It's, it's almost your perfect shadow color. And wherever I have, like here's another one. This could be actually made into a shape similar to the little bud. So see, now when I paint over this water lily, that shadow will be built in. And of course, there'd be a shadow under here too. So I'm always thinking shadows. This would be casting a shadow onto this lily pad. So because we don't have photographs to look at, we'll just kind of make it up. Give them some interesting little broken petal-like shapes. There would be a little little shadow under here. So that's, that's pretty good now. This is our underpainting is complete. Well, finally, we get to think about painting the actual positive shapes of our images here. One of my very favorite things to paint are these water lilies. And I have a friend named Vivian Bly to thank for showing me this next technique. She actually thought of this oh many, many years ago. So what, what I usually do when I'm painting these water lily pads is I wet them first, and then I evaluate their position on the painting. So you can see down here they're against a light, but over here they're against a dark. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put light colors over here against the dark. And then over on this, this side, I'm going to use, for example, the quinacridone gold, much darker yellow. It's a little bit lighter here, too. I can afford to go a little darker in here. Then I'm going to take my Antwerp blue. And the Antwerp, of course, will have to go down here and become darker against the light.
But over in here, I'm not going to put much of the blue. I'm just going to leave it in a light between a yellow and a green. And then over here, I can go a little darker too. So it's all about light against dark, dark against light. Now, you can add the color of your flowers into your greenery, like these lily pads now, or you can glaze it on later. I think what I'm going to do is just throw a little bit of color into this for now. This is just a little bit of the quin coral. I'm going to add a little bit right now. And you can see it grays it down, but it also echoes those warm colors you see in the flower. Now that needs to just set there a little bit. And meanwhile, I'm going to grab out my plastic wrap. <laughs> this is saran wrap, and I like the original heavy-duty premium, not the cling. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gather up a bit of this here. So I'm gathering it up and then I'm pulling it into these shapes that go from this center out. And this is the part that Vivian Bly came up with. So now I'm going to put this right in the middle of my flower, just like that. And look at what happens when I press this down very gently. I get those radiating shapes. Pretty cool. Thank you, Vivian. Now the next important thing is to select a color for your water lilies. And I've made up my mind I was going to do red. So I'm coming in with a very dark red so you can see what I'm doing. This is my alizarin crimson. And what I do is on dry paper, I start with the furthest back petal. What people want to do is paint that first petal. Very bad idea. So what you want to do is you wet your brush, you shake it out, you take the extra moisture off, and then coming in at right angles like this, you take that color and you just move it up. Let me put a little bit more in here. So this is my straight alizarin crimson painted into the furthermost petal, but as you can see, it's dark up here, so I definitely want to take and lose this edge into a soft wash and leave the actual top of this a almost the white of the paper. See how nice that is. Let's do it again. Again, I'm going to start with the petal way back here. It's going to be dark in these crevices, darks here. Then I shake my brush free of the water touch it onto a tissue, and then I come in here and lose this edge at right angles so that we're getting this slightly graded wash going from very dark mid-tone to the white of the paper. So many people just paint these flat, but that's not what we want. We want it to go dark to light, dark to light, dark to light. Now some of these petals, like the one up here, is against a light area. So that petal, for example, is going to be dark. So you don't even have to look at a photograph. It's just a matter of what it's next to. If it's next to a light, you make it dark. If it's next to a dark, you make it light. Now, don't be fooled by these water lilies that are behind. You have to paint the water lily before you paint that petal. Because if you paint that petal, you'll make it too dark. Then you've got dark next to dark next to dark. So <clears throat> the point of this whole lesson is that you have to start with the part that's furthest back, the water lilies in this case, in this case, and work your way to the very front petals. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm just going to go from lily pad to petal, and I'm just going to pull it towards the front. And then we'll come back and, and finish up a few little details. One of the things I want to do before I come back and finish this painting is I want to show you how you can make stamps onto this Enru paper. So if I take colors that already relate to the picture, maybe some of the <clears throat> alizarin crimson, 
And these are store-bought stamps, and they have writing on them that you can't read. So to me, this is the perfect stamp. And so you just come in and using your watercolor, not real wet. It has to be fairly dry. You can see I'm going from directly from the color directly onto the stamp. And I'm using a flat brush and I'm working against the grain. And what I do is I then stamp it, and usually it's too much color, so I stamp it again. That's usually perfect. And then I stamp it again, and this gives me the ghost. And very often the ghost is my favorite one. And then I figure that's clean enough for the next person to use. <laughs> so let's try that again. I'm going to take, this is another this is another very interesting stamp and it's written in Italian so first of all I can't read it because it's Italian but it's also not the complete thing it's just a little section of it so it's it's fantastic I love these little stamps and I would never stamp directly onto my picture I always like to do the stamping onto a, this Enru oriental paper and then I come back, rip it up, and glue it down. So what we're doing is preparing some stamps to be used later. Again, three times, and the ghost. So you're going from very heavy to perfect to a ghost. This is kind of a cool one. It's actually a little bit of a pine needle. <laughs> but we're going to just stamp it and see what's going on here. Oh, very nice. Here's another cool one, just some circles. You never know, we've got those circular forms on our picture. That might look really nice somewhere. So, now this is ready to dry, and when I come back, I'm going to show you how I can apply these. Well, you can see I've been having a lot of fun off camera. I did almost all of the lily pads. I do have this one here that I didn't finish. And as you know, I'm going to wet it first. Over here where it's in the light area, I'll be painting it darker. Over here where it's in the dark area, I'll keep it light. And I kept this for you because I wanted to remind you that all these textures and cast shadows and things that were drawn on, just paint it like they're not even there because that's all part of the final design. As you can see, I've worked my way from the back petals to the front petal. So I'm just going to do this one last petal. Well, actually, there's two, but I'm just going to do one. <laughs> so again, I'm going to start with my alizarin crimson, the darkest value red I have on my palette. And now we do have some dark next to dark, but we can still pull this out starting at right angles and keeping it lighter against the darker background and this is all there is to it you put the darkest dark on dry paper pull that out so you're getting a nice graded wash and then just keep your lightest light as a contrast next to the other petals. So I'll just go ahead and finish all these. Another important thing to remember is that in your lily pads, and this is true of any floral painting that you do, you want to echo the color of your flower into the lily pads. Now sometimes I'll throw it in first. You saw me throw some in here before I put the plastic down. But you can also do it later. So if I want to take just a little bit of a nice warm color, I can just simply glaze this over the dry surface. Again, wetting my brush, shaking it out, and losing the edge. It really is, it's just such a fabulous idea to come in and put some of these warm colors into the lily pad. Because without it, they, they just look too, they're too green, they're too bright. So I would take a lot of time thinking about this and pulling in those warm colors to 
to really tie the painting together. The other thing is you want to put some of these colors into these fun things, that these stringy things that are coming around. So of course I'm going to leave it light here, but where it crosses over, I might decide to make it darker here. And maybe some yellow in here. And then adding a little Antwerp blue and maybe some gold. I can come in here and make it darker. So it's going from yellow into a green into a red. So just have some fun with these. Keeping the, of course, a little red has to go into the green. <laughs> Lose the edge. So those are going to be my next fun experience is coming around and pulling color into these shapes. And the whole thing is to keep them light against the dark, but make them dark against the light. So it's just a matter of when where they cross over, you, you have a little transitional wet area. Here too, I'm gonna to leave it light. Right about here, I'm gonna start it darker. And then I'll just wet that little edge where the transition is. And if it's gonna go into this dark, it's gonna come out a little bit dark. And then it'll be come a lost edge. Because I want it to start dark, end up light. So just have fun with all those lines. Now the next exciting thing is to put in some of these stamps that we played with. And again, you need, do you want to pick the one that's really dark, the one that's medium, or the one that's just a ghost? Let's start with the one that's kind of a medium shape. Remember, I never stamp directly on my painting. It's, it just takes over, and something that's already this busy, that could be a real disaster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this lettering not in the middle of an open area. The whole idea is that these are transitions. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take, put this somewhere between a dark and a light area, and I'm going to glue it down with my Yes Paste. So I've got my Yes Paste handy. Remember now, every time you go into your Yes Paste, you have to check the consistency. Ooh, this is beautiful, but it's a little bit on the thick side. So I'm just going to take and pour in a little bit of water and re stir. Is that a word? <laughs> now we're ready to think about gluing this down. So place it where you want it. Put the glue down. And what you do is you glue it until it looks transparent. It's really a neat thing. Partly in a dark, partly in a light. Glue it until it becomes totally transparent and bonded with the picture. And just I just put a few of these around. I don't get too carried away. At least three. So here's another interesting little spot. Remember, you wipe away most of the glue. And I'm actually pressing to bond that with the paper. Oh, yeah, I like that. Now here, here too are my circles. I always, I almost always go for the ones that are the lighter, the ghost-like shapes. I prefer those. So here's some circles. Let's put them over here. Maybe we can do another little part of a circle. Very seldom do I put the whole thing in. Partly in, partly out. And even this little rascal with the pine cones, you can't see the pine cones. But this is a nice texture. Where am I going to put this? Maybe 
maybe over in here. And see, they can go partly in the image, partly out of the image. Let's do that. Right about there. So you can see it just gets richer and richer and richer. And <clears throat> all I have is a few more little shapes. I notice this is a little bit bright here. I might just take and wet that a bit. Maybe put a little, just a little tone over it. So you might look for any real hot spots like that that are just jumping too much. And you should have a beautiful finished painting. So I'm going to show you a little gallery of some of the paintings done in this technique. And as you can see, here we have a totally different color dominance. We have some tissue paper collage added and a whole different look. This one here has a very strong uh, dominance of just basically yellow, green, and blue with a little hint of an uh, orange. I really like these colors, so I do stay focused a lot on these, this particular group of colors. But again, you can see the dark against light, light against the dark. A lot of interesting transitional things. Here I've even added napkins. And <clears throat> I happen to be in love with texture, so you got to like texture to do this lesson. Here's another one with a similar theme, but this time I decided to go into a transitional shape of checkerboards. And the checkerboards are, if you'll notice, in the focal, most focal part of the area, they're warmer and then they go into cooler and darker. But always they're interlocking with your focal area. Things are breaking out. They're connecting to the edges of the paper. And so I'm trying to create movement. I'm trying to keep light against dark, dark against light. Same, same old, same old but it sure has been fun just coming up with these new variations. Well, this is done now. I really didn't add any more collage papers, but I might. Sometimes I need to just sit and look at it and think about it a little bit. But I am pleased with the way the reds in the flower relate to the reds in the background. You can see I did add some final touches of some of the reds onto some of the lily pads, and I did pull in a few more reds into the background. So we're done and I'm happy with it.